test, 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 test. Get that three reverb, baby, reverb, not a reverb, test, test. nothing or hopefully maybe who's done that before you but here is the <laughs> here's the thinking in order to have nothing you have to have something in order to perceive nothing it's, a, it's an interesting concept so that the nothingness of this and I'll just intersect this with uh, with a statement that may flow through this you might keep in mind throughout this whole this whole event here is, a uh, quote by John Cage, if something is boring after two minutes, try for four minutes. <laughs> and if it's boring after four minutes, try it for eight minutes. And if it's boring for eight minutes, 16 minutes, and 16 minutes, 32 minutes, and so on and so on. At some point, you will find that this something is not boring. To continue, the operating system of this seating pattern you've all come here to maybe experience is based on a lot of the uh, uh, structure of my, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Check, check. Yeah, good. So you can hear me. Uh, by the way, another nothingness is the nothing of the nothingness of the sound that is supposed to be amplified by the microphone, which is purposely attenuated and squelched down to nothing. 
<laughs> there's the visual effect, hopefully. Yeah, what's he doing up there? The mic's not on, and he's making a really good point to be on mic. That's another sort of juxtaposition of, of the visual and the actual, and the absurdity. But I like the idea of having it be visual that I'm working with this mic in an acoustic, natural sound environment actually being uh, obstructed by a microphone. Back to the seating, you're not going to get away with the sitting. The seating. The chairs are all white and they're all exactly the same, they're manufactured. They are part of a modulation system and they're distributed across this area in frequency. The frequency of the spacing between the chairs varies to some degree, which is called frequency modulation. All of the elements are the same, but the distance apart in the distribution is variable. This is the underlying operating system of all image reproduction technology. The cluster of all of these modules, these chairs, that are the same exact size, cluster up or further apart, form values of gray, which are translated into color or whatever. That's one of the, it's a visual element. So, I like to see this as a frequency modulated system. Interfaced, this is what's fascinating. Interfaced with that system is another type of modulation. Amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation, the grid is constant. These are finer, the grid is absolutely locked in constant but the size of the element varies. The amplitude, fascinating, the amplitude changes. The grid is the same. The chairs are flying around, but they're all the same size. This, the, the grid's the same, but the size varies. So this is a wonderful hybrid, I think. It's a regular, it's, it's, a, it's a hybrid of a frequency modulation and amplitude modulation interface. And what is the amplitude modulation? your bodies. All of the variables in size and proportion and density and height and size is an amplitude modulated system that is interfaced with the, the frequency modulated system. That is the wonderful nothingness of your seating structure <laughs> for this piece. We have uh, also uh, facilitated uh, if you need to leave you can leave uh, just so you know at any time if you're sitting in the environment of something null you can it can be nullified by getting out of here okay <laughs> so that, that way feet free is an escape pattern and if you go if it's easier to get this way there's a you can exit up this, this other di other dimension here Part of this, um, uh, this series is, is, uh, is uh, people talk about their background, where they came from, where they're born, how they happen to be thinking like this, or why they're making this art that they're making, or the music they're playing, or what, what, what is what in their brains. So, so I can't find out, I'm trying to find out where I came from and how this happened, and how I can be thinking constantly about things that are so simple and minimal and limited. <coughs> And, not, and without having to, the art is uh, totally without any sort of uh, narrative or any storytelling, and there's no information about anything that's going on. It's just a pure, it's a pure visual experience. Just like it's a lot like orchestral music. Orchestral music is uh, without language. It's, it's sound. It's just it's something you get down to. Me. So, it is the sensation of just experiencing it, seeing it. No narrative, no message, no story. Just the visual, that's the essence of the whole thing.
so, it, so I was thinking about this, and, and how I became an artist, I think, is because I'm tracking back down, you know, in Red Lodge. I was born in Red Lodge, Montana. I was there until I was 18, I graduated, and then I split. Just like Shane did. <laughs> and Delhi. And uh, when I was a kid, around 13, 14, you start doing stuff, thinking about things, I, uh, for some reason, started stuttering. A very, very intense, locked, locked down stutter. And uh, I had all this thoughts and all this energy about reading, you know, and, and I was playing trumpet at that time, studying music and everything. And so I actually used music as a expression to delve into, to be able to express myself in some way. That and athletics, like selling athletics and music. Uh, not much art. And that's just a little bit of background of where this comes from and how, how this thinking develops. This is my idea here. Um, here's a book that I spotted, and now I have it, and here it is. This is the essence of what I'm talking about. No, it validates sort of my thinking about purely visual pictures of nothing by the curator of the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, well, Gordon was Kirk Bennett. Right here, just a quick poem. What is abstract art good for? What is the use? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it has no function. It has no purpose. There's no, you know, it's just an experience. Then along comes Jane Deschner. Oh, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years later, that reinforces this. She has me this just out of nowhere. Jane uh, 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 harvests uh, language. Uh, found language from the universe. We found photographs from the Earth and merges them together in various uh, configurations. And so here one day I see this that she shows me while we're watching TV. She cranks these out, she watches TV, and she's handing this over to me and says, Yeah, okay, wow, isn't that great? Yeah, and then she's going on to another one. Here. So anyway, here is whew, this probably precipitated you guys having to sit here and listen to this. Okay, if you'd like, again, entrance, exit, exit, exit. <laughs> Nothing. First of all, you can't read, see it, so it's, let me know that something's happening and we're left, you know, related to its context. Nothing is more real than nothing. Samuel Beck. I have a slideshow going here. Anybody notice? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nothing. What do you think? It's, uh, uh, it's a slideshow here. I have uh, imagined synchronized, uh, just like this chair, right? Behind nothing. What, what's it? Should there be something? There is something there. Isn't it amazing how what huge amount of energy is there as far as the light and its reflectance on, on what you see in contrast and then the form? So it not only types in the light, this simply simple thing here was tied into nothing, like what are, where's the deer? Where's the hill? Where's the mountains? Where's the lake? Or where's the art? Where is the art? Is there art? This is a slideshow by an artist. Where's the art? That's the art. That's the art. And the art, before your very own eyes in this neverland of nothingness, there's no talent, there's no, well, there is a certain amount of setting that they know, but there's, anybody can do this. See, that's another thing. It's so simple. It's so null. It's so nothing. Sorry to get off mic. It's so nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You missed the mic part. <laughs> it's so nothing that is laced with complex parallax configurations of mathematics of 
life of the, the underlying the system is a pre-programmed sequence based on a Fibonacci sequence. I shouldn't have the chart here. So all of these off and on, one and zero. Zero is light, one is absence of light. Light, absence of light. Light, absence of light. Each projector configured in a sequence based on a Fibonacci series, which is a natural escalating, modulating, beautiful form creating structure, mathematical structure. One, and there's two, each one is running straight ahead, zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, and then in retrograde, okay? Each one is going straight ahead, then in retrograde, then the, first, the other one starts in retrograde and goes to, it goes to straight ahead. So anyway, there's a formula, there's a system if you sit and want to tap into the timing of this, you can spot after a while, like, like Cage said, you know, do you find this interesting? Do you find it boring? If it's boring, maybe the more you listen to it, it becomes more interesting. And the other value is what I want to mention, parallax, which is fascinating, is simple system. These things are created, they have a, they have a software system, it's called the system. somebody wrote the software, so when you're setting these things up, the ball's not square and things like that, then it actually adjusts the parallax of these rectangles into a perfect rectangle if they're not aligned properly. So I'm going to tap into that te technology and actually use it as a, as, a, as a variable of the imaging. So these are purposely cranked out of, out of parallel. See, they're on um, one now, but you, you can't see it. Anyway, I will modulate these by varying the juxtaposition of the two random, un endlessly vacillating parallax distortion. Mm -hmm. And they flow in, and then when they hit onto each other, it's, a, it's, it's like a miracle, and then they disappear. And you want to see it possibly. And then you come kind of like, oh, gee, that, was, that one was interesting. I, I, I'm going to see that again. So there's the system. Set up the system. Set these up. Let them generate endless permutations of variables based on off, on, light, and dark. Silence is the loudest noise. Why did I think of this? Why am I doing this, right? This is one of these ideas <laughs> that I've noticed throughout my life is whenever, and I think everybody has, but how do you get it into context of, of, a, of, a, of a piece that communicates? When the, when the air conditioning goes off in the room, you've been standing in there for an hour and a half, it's gone. And you, what was that? How did, that, how did I live through that? What was that? <laughs> that's, 
that's what's going on with this, and I put together and I, think, I thought that was uh, null. Are we still null? Are we still nulling? Okay. You still nothing? Not, nothing too much? Not just, not just, you know, I mean, what could that be, right? Somebody forgot to turn, or, or this got turned on accidentally in your luggage in the aircraft. <laughs> and there you get it, this buzzing. But that created a thank you, Phoebe, for it. Uh, Okay, so we've, uh, we're going to make a piece now, based on nothing. A piece that, you, that I'm fascinated with because I, I, you know, like you say here, I think this is just a wonderful, this, this light, just the light, the density of the light, the intensity of the light, parallax, all these complexities are reflective of, of the additive value, the subtractive value of shadows, lights, endless parallax, the permutations of distortion, And twisting these things around just themselves. They are the projectors generating the system themselves. We have a piece that I made when I'm uh, trying to get to, get to this picture of nothing. And Nothing is more real than nothing. You know, this is Zen. You know, like maybe maybe thought, maybe people thought this was a Zen meeting tonight. Or something. I, I don't I don't know. So I've got this piece that I made. John Lodge, adhesive behavior analysis panel. No. Again, the operating system behind something that's relatively picture of nothing. I mean, picture of nothing. Probably a picture of nothing. You'd say that's a picture of nothing. If you saw that hanging in a gallery, you'd probably pass right by it. I've seen people, I'd love to watch people watching my work <laughs> in galleries when there's a group show. And, and how that, there's this, and then there's <laughs> I've seen him do that with uh, with Robert Ryman's pieces at the Museum of Modern Art and the Met also. So hey, okay. <laughs> okay. So how could somebody think that they were going to do this here in Billings, Montana, and make a piece like this and actually have it in shows? You know? Well, again, it's that underlying frequency modulation system. So this is clear. Something that's clear, it's transparent, is getting about as close to nothing visible as you can get. Even more than white. It's a pure white painting. It's still white, you think, but transparent, clear. So this part here is transparent. And it is applied, in the, the adhesive part of this is played, applied with spray. Gas propelled adhesive attaches it on here. What you see is the naturally created distribution, the random distribution of particles and cells of gas propelled glue. Gas propelled glue. And just, wow, we want some. There's the piece. And you can see, you can pass it around, okay? We can see, pass it around and look at it, and you can look and see and whatever, and see if there's anything there, so. Can you hear me okay? I've been off mic. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the idea on that one. Okay. <clears throat> so here, here it is. Here's the base. I'll show you how. Uh, here is the wonderful. There's the piece right there, essentially. Interesting? Could be interesting. The piece gets gas propelled glue. Now this stuff is that underlying operating system, just like the chairs and the amplitude interface. This is not only wonderful because I'm sensitive to, since I'm 
involved in the division also, that this not only is functional as an adhesion, but it also has a connection to white noise. So you can hear, you can hear the, the, the process happening that makes the work. So how many people, do you listen to your paint when it's going down, the paint burden when you're, you scrape that. Can you hear it? You can hear it. You can hear the scrape. We yeah. you hear it a certain degree. But that's an interesting sort of connection to your work. So here, here it is. Here's the the uh, adhesive behavior analysis piece. Right there. So it's a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> Take this, look at this. Now that was just random particles being sprayed and flying through space. I set up the process. It's got form. It comes out of a machine, right? A machine, this process, it has a nozzle that's finely tuned, so there is a point of reference. It's not just totally random flying around from everywhere. Now, the question is, do I, tr do I measure this and, <laughs> and get it centered perfectly on the sheet? on this mount, the mount part? No. The bit, no. <laughs> so, this by the way, this mounting sheet is uh, mylar laminated card paper on one side. So I'm going to use the laminated side which relates to the mylar on this. The mylar is actually on the paper. So we have the substance and then this goes on here. Now it's creating shadows in its application. Too bad we can't. We can't capture those somehow, the shadows. But there we have a John Lodge piece. But maybe if it's big, I've done some bigger ones. It'll probably be in a museum show somehow. If they push nothing far enough. Okay. What's the price on that? <laughs> <laughs> did it, I'll pay you for tab. <laughs> <laughs> you see other, uh, okay, there's other transparency. Uh, again, nothing is more real than nothing. So if you get close to nothing, maybe you have something that's really real because it's not influenced by narrative, politics, stories, sensibilities, taste, somebody like me, somebody like me. This is just pure in itself. It's so simple. It is so nothing. It is just pure. That's what I like about it. It made itself in a lot of ways. This, there's, no, there's no technique. There's no craftsmanship. So it's got to be in the zone of the flow. I don't know if you notice. Here's another piece here that's huge. Nothing. Interface, not with its own, not with its own uh, uh, artwork, going to be, be projected and used as a and framed, maybe put in a museum. This nothingness gets interfaced into a building. A building gets interfaced in its windows, which are a connection to the transparency. Building its interface in its window structure with these modules. See the modules now? What you see them? Oh yeah. So once you have one module, that might be something. But as soon as you have more than one module, and then you, I put them into a perfect grid. I try to make them more than that, and just lock them down into a grid. And you have what I call a light form interference interface, modulated modules. These obstruct the plane of view in typically viewing out of windows. One goes from the inside through the window to infinity. All of a sudden, as soon as you notice this, your eyes lock into something that's in the foreground. So you can, you can vacillate back and forth in the perspective of the field. So this is a piece that turned out to be quite minimal and quite like, what are you doing here? What is, what is this? Uh, uh, and it, but it was installed at the University of Wyoming Art Museum lobby of their 
apartments here. It was installed over a period of six months and actually videoed every moment <laughs> in intervals of 30 seconds. I have, uh, uh, and that was the, the, the uh, conceptual sort of influence or monumental, really, this is what the curators thought would be needed to, to be recorded. So I've created this here, and that's the theory. It's what the Monarch University Art Museum had instructions so people would actually, visitors would actually add to the piece. And the material. So how do you do this? Because all of these modules are modulated, and so you can vary the density of these and create another layer of light wave interference. So in a fairly random sense, you multiply the density of the layers and you create another level of distortion in that zone. Null, but really makes it wonderfully close to being nothing, and null. This is really easy to manufacture. That's what I really love. It is tapping into static claim labels. It's the static claim that you print, you to print on this, sure. Who would ever want to not print on this, right? And you rub it on your and you put it on your window, then it, it because of surface tension, it adheres to the window. So they quickly, you saw that, they quickly go up, they stay there forever, and they have this viscosity surface in there. They're, they're just laced with surface tension. That means they, they create Newton's rings within here. And that's where you see all these details, all these random bubbles of things that look like that look like rain or something that are actually component of nature. We have the synthetic material and synthetic glass through this zone. So there's these levels of perception. What is it? Is it there? Isn't it? Is it supposed to be there? Is it anything? Is it boring? Is it null? It's close to null. How else would you have? You know, the big question, how, how, you have to have something. You have, that's just, it's, you have to have something. I mean, I could not be here. That would be the pure null, I think, of this whole. <laughs> By the way, anybody like Gordon, anybody would come to a to performance that the title is null. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. But it's <laughs> choice is not null. Right. And that's so what I mean, say. I John. just, when you put yeah. that piece down, I thought, it looks like a John Lobb piece because it's perfectly <laughs> square inside that white right space. <laughs> and it, I recognize it as John Lodge's work. That looks like John Lodge's work. So what is it in terms of your work that is not null, but in fact, decisions that you're making to tell the story? Well, it's a decision. It, yeah, that, 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 that's what I was just talking about. You can't just get there. The decision is the is experience, it's the thought, it's the idea, it's the way of thinking. That's what I was trying to get somewhere. I don't know why. You know, why do I see like this? How do I think like this? Hell, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know why, but I come, seem to be able to, to come up with some rich ideas. I mean, you know, not many people relate to minimalist art. And I, you know, I, I just, you know, the less that's there, the, you know, the, the, the whole conceptual part, of, you know, soul of wit, the whole, the whole, the whole part of art that, like, I was just talking about being pure. You don't mess with it. You don't. It, it, you you set up the plan. You have to have a thought. You have to have an idea to start with anything. And then you, it's like you flip a switch, and the idea makes the piece. It's like this. The idea was, hmm. And right, out, right away, I think, now this is really nothing. I mean, you know, people would be wondering, what the heck? But this thing, had, like I said, has this huge energy, this huge fascination about the whole system of the gas-propelled glue. It just sounds great. I mean, I made it, you know, aerosol glue. But gas-propelled glue? Who doesn't want that in your heart, you know? So, <laughs> so, 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 that thing is like, yeah. <laughs> so, and then the mechanism of it is fascinating. I use it. I tap into it. Because it's, it, 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 you can see, you set it up. It's planned, but it's random also. 
it, 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 it's, and it, it gets down to the purity. It doesn't have pigment. Essentially, it's spray paint and, and, and graffiti and imagery. Right? We have no imagery here. I love it because it's purely functional. And the function of it to hold this nothingness transparency to its mounted surface makes it pure because it's, that's its function. It wasn't, it wasn't designed, it wasn't thought through. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so when I was in high school, back to high school here, and I was doing music, so here I ended up with a trumpet by accident. No, just total dumb accident, so I had this trumpet when I was 10 years old. You know, and eight years later, I was off to Berkeley College of Music to study jazz. You know, how in the hell would that happen if you're in Red Lodge, Montana? So I have this, this horn, and then I heard some jazz. So here I was playing. About the time I was graduating high school, I was playing jazz. And I was playing a, a, I was playing a Thelonious Monk too. So this is something now, right? I'll just show you how this is all. To a wonderful novelist. So here's a quick excerpt of Straight Note Chaser, Thelonious Monk, played with no chops, <laughs> pure uh, nerve endings, and no warm up. That's more interesting than playing drum. <laughs> <laughs> that was the start of a visual connection to something. <laughs> this is 1964. You say, where did this come from? You see the transparent static claim? You see the connection to this bag? I actually made a piece with these bags. This is called re-encapsulated capsule. Reencapsulated capsule progression. It's up here on the wall. You wonder what this was? These are the picking that that uh, bag, which is a sandwich bag, pre-existing material, and then making something a permutation or a progression from it. So these are re I call them capsule because you can encapsulate them because they make chamber. 
So they're re-encapsulated capsules. So they're simply, again, back to whenever, whenever in doubt, just use the Fibonacci series and you're cool. So I, so I make a Fibonacci series. Can you see the modulation of the density and the amount of reflection in these? Yeah, you dropped one. Yeah, I know it fell. That's the eight. So here's the, <laughs> here's the series of the complexity that increases as we progress through the system. One, one, three, one, one, two, three, five, eight. Boring? <laughs> if you plot these, they'll start forming a, a, a spiral or a golden triangle, depending on how you plot them. So, that's a so, so here's the progression. It's like from, from loud to soft, from, from soft to loud. But I thought, well, you know what? There's something missing here. This is the piece, right? Would you say that this is an art piece? Would you give me that? This is John Lodge, and he has a sculpture here. And one here, the engineering. I don't know the time, the engineering isn't there. But this is, this is eight modules that have been re-encapsulated into, into each other. Let's see how much time that is. Mm -hmm. anyway, that goes here. Okay. And these are the numbers. But you know what? You know, there's something missing. This is my opportunity to get to the essence of nothing. When I thought of this, I had this piece up, it was installed in a show, and I said, now I have the ultimate real zero. Because I'm to that mathematical progression, I can add zero, because this is a part of all numbers, is zero. So I'll have one of these modules be zero, which is right there. I finally made a piece. That's nothing in the context of an art piece. If you try to do that all by itself on the wall, it wouldn't work. You'd say, oh, that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. But if you cap it in to the sequence of this, then you have a connection to zero. So here it is, zero. Nothing. No. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to have another experience of nothingness or something these. These are square. One side black, one side white. There's 19,500 of them that I have. I have 333 here. They're made by a machine. They're machine-made paper. They're, in a, they're put into a printing machine. Again, no hands, no, no, no craftsmanship, nothing. It's the formula like using this machine here. The machine made these all the way through. The machine made these modules that can be, that can be put into endless structures and permutations and massing of quantities, just like these chairs. They're all the same size. If you throw them around on the floor, what do, you, what do we have? Frequency modulation, right? Because they're all the same size and the frequency varies. But there's another variable in it, white and black. So that's interfaced with white and black. It gives it another layer of automatic variables that create some fascinating sort of connection to randomness. Because which one is going to be black and which one's going to be white. And they just fly around and then you photograph the permutation. But if you look at these also, and I'm going to hand these out and you can pass them around. Another, another, just Corey, that was such a great question. My God, you're going to see this. Well, it's what I thought that was going to happen with all these machines. I thought I'm going to have a bit, really big variable. I'm going to violate all the laws of printing offset on big presses that was my day job. I'm going to take these and they're going to late be laced with ink. And I think I ran through the, press, the printing press twice just to get a lot of ink on them. Then usually we let them dry. Because the last thing you ever want to do with the printing thing is have what we call offset. But I purposely trimmed them wet, so now I have 
19,500 each individual, each different and unique monoprints. These are classic <laughs> monoprints from the, Mon from the Rhode Island School of Design technical <laughs> book. Phoebe, don't you think? These are, are technically taught, transferring one side of ink to another sheet of paper with the, with the pigment that's on the sheet. And you can look at these. And it's a fascinating, endless, vacillating, just like nature, sea of in that, uh, in that mechanically created piece is a totally random system of monoprints. Now that you've got a connection to that, I want you to help you make a piece for the museum. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> See, if this gets through the curatorial, I'm going to document it. Then. By the way, uh, a lot of this I also didn't, just uh, nothing is more real than the quotes. Uh, one quote by Joseph Boyce just started, you don't need to know, it, 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 it's thinking is form. So, you got thought and think, or not generate form, some sort of entity form. Okay, I've been wondering, I've been, all of a sudden I've had this tissue paper, I've had this tissue paper for years and years, and, and I, I was, I've been finding myself fumbling and feeling this stuff more than usual. I always really like it. You know, this is, this is tissue paper. And it's not, it's not like tissue paper. It's, uh, it's tissue paper, but that's it's not meant to use for wrapping. Yeah, that's, that's like it, it, it comes from the tissue paper. Oh, it's not tissue paper. No, I don't think so, but it's tissue But it's made in Japan, and it's used, uh, the industrial use, is, is, is the spaces between uh, the very, very fragile, sensitive, sort of sensitive surfaces of printing. I mean, okay? I found myself, I don't know what that. I can do it. And I said, I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint it like a machine again. Yeah? I'm going to be like a machine. I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint this and see what happens with the paint on this. Okay? Because this stuff is like something else that is okay. And usually, if, if, if it would fall apart. So here, I laced this thing with paint. Black Jeffo. Not, the, the simple, oh, by the way, the simplest, most basic paint you can get is gesso. It's not acrylic, it's not considered paint, it's like the substructure of all other wonderful, beautiful paint. I use that substructure in my work. That's what I use, the elemental, base, simple part. Here it is, this piece, and I'm fascinated with this thing. It's surprising. One thing I set up, you know, I have a rule, and I have a law. I said, I'm not going to just leave the streaks, you know. You know, when you're painting it, you leave, it's nice to leave the little flaws here and there, and I guess that, that, that creates the imagery. But this one, I'm just going to go with the surface itself. The surface. And it holds together. And, it, and I think, well, why am I doing this? Where does this come from? And I realized that where I, why I started tapping into this and feeling it and that painting is because I'd been seeing Gordon McConnell's work that he's been doing in his studio, taking magazine uh, out of art forum, magazine pages out of art forum. My book, is this secret? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I <laughs> 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 love promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and you get that test, the paint and the glue on the paper it creates this wonderful endless. But, it's, but you're using it. So I just thought I'd use that. Yeah, <laughs> sur <laughs> sur <laughs> What? <laughs> Never mind. You're making pictures. Yeah, and I'm making just nothing. Again, nothing. I wish I could. Yeah. There it is, nothing. <laughs> nothing. 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 How did that get? Straight line. Hmm. Must have been sitting on something underneath. Nothing. Isn't this wonderful? Nothing. Look at that. How can that? Look at that. One little artifact. Right here on the edge, and I said, well, I'm going to let that go. <laughs> but it's like painting. I'm a painter I, because I use paint. Gordon calls me a painter, which I, I, I use paint, and I paint like a house painter. So look, that's 
that's that's all the better. better. Yeah. So anyway, and then and then you know, I paint like a machine. So here's the piece, and that's why I'm fascinated with it. And also, not I'm sorry, I got I ran too fast. And also, Shane Dion makes a lot of pieces out of paper the same way, put it together. And I think some, that was I've seen these pieces in the last years, and it, that's been tumbling around. Yeah. So this. This is the piece that I'm going to, uh, the idea is going to be suspended in a floater frame and just float it just the way it is. So you can feel it and try to be, you know, be careful with it. You can handle, handle it around, but maybe if it gets that the, the artifacts that happen by accident could be the ones not created by me, but created by this audience here. The people that they can then document something like that will happen. That somebody grabbed it and just kind of <laughs> <laughs> grabbed it wrong. So this is two, these is two pieces together? No, that's just one piece, that front and back. Yeah, it, it, so essentially it's a slab of paint. Because the paint's thicker than the, than the substrate. Mm -hmm. Are you getting bored with these yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No? If you keep an eye on it every now and then, you look over here and see maybe what, what might be happening. I don't know. And I like doing stuff and don't see what you're doing. That's another process of drawing. You draw it. Okay, so now we come to the finale of this uh, nothingness. The, the, the most nothing of, of nothing that we can <laughs> create. That has some, maybe even beyond nothing. That it has a minus, you know, the, the minus, you know, there's a minus one, minus infinity, minus whatever, exception. This, uh, this is connected to a lot of different things, and, and uh, we'll see how it develops. And now un it'll unfold here based on the fact that it is the attempt to. Accomplish nothing and then beyond in all aspects of a work of art, including the economic part. Right? <laughs> That's the source material. That's found. Found object, you know, found objects. But that's a found object. That, that is a manufacturing glyph that's stamped and silk screened onto a box of the most generic envelope on the planet. A number 10, 24 pound white wool envelope. I just love envelopes. <laughs> when you look at an envelope and you unfold it, you say, oh my God. And there's millions and billions of them. Anyway, that's that's what is that? It's not a barcode. It's just a nothing. It's it's a nothing thing on something that nobody even thinks about or cares less. And it's profound what comes inside this envelope and how it transports information through all you know everywhere. It's the vehicle. It's the it's the time capsule. You know, the thing, an envelope. Just nothing. But it's but it's there. And it has an adhesive. It's so it's so simple and yet so functional. It could be nothing. So that's the source. You have to have something again. Damn it! You, you, I get you know I wouldn't be standing here if we didn't have something. So that's that's the source material. A found glyph that's been made mechanic. I didn't do anything. I just chose it, Kirby. I did choose it based on probably looking at a lot of coal mines when I was a kid also. <laughs> So what am I going to do with this to make some images? Well, let's see. You're going to make a, what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to scan it and make a silk screen. And silk screen is all over in a big painting. Have it all juxtaposed. And, oh, yeah, OK. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to make a limited edition. Since, since these things, there's, 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 uh, there's 10, 100,000 billion of these envelopes. I'm going to do something similar to that in a piece of art to connect to that manufacturing glyph. So I'm going to tap into that whole thing. I'm going to make a limited edition print using all my machines. And I'm going to do it on the cheapest paper. 
limited edition, <laughs> limited edition print by John Lodge. When I put it on the cheapest paper on the planet, newsprint. And when I put it on the most efficient, mass producing equipment, a web offset press that takes rolls of paper, runs them through black ink that, ne that never dries in, it's just the most funkiest surreal black newspaper ink, uh, very uh, loose and uh, low viscosity. Anyway, the, through this, 15,000 of these an hour come out from the rolls, are printed, come out the end of the machine, are folded, they're done. It's a tabloid format. It's not a single sheet of paper. Because of the machine, it's actually more efficient and cheaper to do it eight page tabloid than it is to do an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper printed on one side. Okay? That is the down and dirty, unbelievable, simple, basic concept. So I have manufactured a tabloid is the format for my limited edition print. I have that on my wall. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Here, limited edition print, signed by John Lodge. <laughs> Number, there's 1,100. Usually, limited editions are an edition of 10, maybe 25 lithographs, you know, maybe, you know, somewhere in that range. 50, maybe. I got 1,100. <laughs> But I found it just done permutations of that simple manufacturing glyph. That's the other slight interface, an automatic, something that happens quickly, easily, that produces variables. And then I land them up in a grid, which is the next easy step. You just put them in a grid, you don't think about arranging or thinking and balance and, and you know one third over here and you kind of need more weight over here and you have to balance that. No, it's just a just a just in a grid. So the variable is the, is the linear distortion that I created, the parallax. <coughs> wow, I connected this. Okay, so. Then, I know that this paper is so cheap. This is like really nothing, but it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the paper is so damn cheap that it has no opacity. It's not very opaque. That means what you can see. These are all lined up in the grid, so you see the other side in these permutations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the other variable. Here's the permutation of the piece itself. Here's the permutation of the juxtaposition of the transparency. And they're in backwards and forwards and upside down and every which direction. There it is. Eight pages. Comes out. Down. Limited edition print. Since the goal of this piece is to have it be nothing, unlike limited edition prints, the lower the numbers are more desirable. They usually work more, like the artist prints, the first one, the first print out is, is, is more perfect. So it's, it's the desirable one. But in this context, the most desirable ones are the highest numbers. Because they have the least value. They are approaching no value more than the lower numbers. <laughs> right? That's yeah. the most, the yeah. most desirable ones of a lip well, let's just force it. If you have a limited edition print and and jump and, and, and John Lodge printed two million seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand of them, wouldn't having that last one be something that's quite significant yeah. <laughs> to stop? <laughs> <laughs> that last one. Especially if you signed your name to all of them. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good way to get the constant conceptual. So I've taken this now to, hmm, oh, and then here's the title, which then overcompensates for the nothingness of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the title is Linear Distortion Matrix. Circular, linear, axial, retrograde, retrograde inversion permutations generated from a found manufacturing 
No yes. Nothing could be nothing. Bullshit, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the here's the next generation of this as far as being a limited trip, being in the art world and, and, and everything may somehow migrate into some value, some monetary value of art. And what is the art worth and how much is it sell for and what is what and why is that piece? Sell for five million dollars and that piece, you know, whatever. Why is Cyclone Day is nine, you know, sixty-five million dollars? When my five-year-old could do one, just pretty close, that kind of thing. So my my proposal here is for my my own fulfillment of this goal here, you know, this goal of pursuing minus negative is that I'm going to not have you people, if you want one, purchase one maybe. And even further being nothing, I'm not just going to give them to you. I could give them to you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pay you to have one. <laughs> I'm going to pay you cash <laughs> to take these and know that you will keep it in fairly good condition and then to expand maybe, possibly, you don't know, there's no, there's no strength, you know, there's no, uh, if you decide to do this, maybe every now and then you would pull it out at the coffee shop. <laughs> and we... <laughs> <laughs> for a while, you know, for a, for a, a, a period of time, you know, uh, maybe other people might. That's the market developed. John should be placed in the field for you to take it from us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you could maybe do that too. Or, yeah. I have done this, whatever it is, performance piece, I have provided receptacles for disposal. <laughs> At the door, and it says, uh, you know, the linear matrix distortion, the linear distortion matrix disposal. <laughs> Fine, it's a tabloid in the spirit of a tabloid. It has, you know, I mean, there's, that's a possibility too. And you, obviously, right, it, it is, it, I, I, I'm fascinated with the fact that, yes, there is an instinct to say, well, I've experienced it, it's a tabloid, hey, that's interesting information. <laughs> that's what happens to these things. They call them one of the, like, hit the cat's head or something like that. When you throw up the garbage, I don't know. Maybe that was just the red watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am, uh, I am going to, because I love these so much and I want to fulfill that concept of a minus, because to, to me it's a negative value. You know, I'm actually dispersing funds after, after all this. But I, I am ready to purchase these, purchase these and, or pay you to have these. Now, it could be that since the higher numbers are more desirable, the larger numbers, mm -hmm. that I would pay you more. <laughs> 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 Which would mean that they would be less valuable to me. Which is, fulfills the goal. And I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have all, everybody's got stuff. If we want to do that. I'm in. You in? Okay, in. so here, here's uh, here now the now we get into logistics, okay? So here's the here's the num here's the numbers, right? And they go from four I want, I want to six forty six. You want you want the lowest number? Yeah, yeah. Well that's the lowest number, four fourteen. Yeah, Grab it, so. you have it? Four fourteen. There yeah. you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everybody wants one, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm going to take it out in the doctor's waiting room next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nice. People the would stare at me. What's the matter? Yeah. 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 No, I 
keep this original five dollar bill from you inside of my linear distribution matrix. Does it grow in value because it's the original money that was paid? This is a startling new concept. It's at least a good presentation. And that's what they like to carry right now. Oh, so, so I can have a second one? Well, then I'll have a second. You want one? You can have one. Thank you. There you go. Your patty's a patty. I took it. Oh, you did good. You took the money. So, good day. John? But if you don't find it, I'll hang it up in my study hall and watch it. Yeah. I actually have one. He gave me money. I literally have the best one. Now I know if I have one. You got time. You got time. You got it. One last thing. Okay. One last thing yet. Jobs. This is actually more valuable. Less valuable. Yes. Yeah. Than what you gave me last time. Good. That's good for you. Thank you. Yeah. You signed it with Kent the last time. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. This is excellent. What's the number? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Wow. I can't, I really. I can't imagine. Frame them together, Mom. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Where am I going? Okay. Uh, okay. What? Well, we got to have more nothing. If you can stand it, if you can stand it. I have nothing. Nine, seven, seven. Nine, seven, seven. Make the, I didn't make the connection when I did the, <laughs> this with this aerosol. This is gas propelled glue. I didn't make the connection. That was the visual piece. I'm going to, I'm going to do, use gas propelled air and connect it to the generation of the, an audio piece. Gas propelled air. Two varying densities. See? Look at this. This is like a, a amplitude modulated air. There's this here. There's that there. This is more. This is this is a higher volume, less pressure. This is more pressure, less volume. Consequently, it's going to affect the tonality of the piece. Again, no virtuosity, no fingering charts, no flexibility, just pure air.